Hey guys, Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series and in today's episode we're going to be going over an introduction and looking at how we can save and load game information uh, for your games inside of Unreal Engine 4. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at how we can save variables um, that are persistently stored when you close the game, when you open it again. Um, you could use something like this for uh, storing the location of an item in a level or a player XP system or something like that. So if I go ahead and quickly drag this project of mine onto the screen, you can see I've got a level and I've also got my XP. And the trouble is with using normal variables for this kind of stuff, it's not stored when you close and open the game again, it's just completely wiped off the memory. So if you're going to be making something like this, then you should definitely use the save game system to store this information. Now you can do loads and loads of other cool stuff with this, such as saving locations of objects in the game, setting it, you know, to create a proper load game system. But for now, let's just introduce you to getting it all set up. So I'm going to get rid of this and let's get started. So before we do go ahead and create it ourselves, we're going to quickly go over exactly what's going on here. So first things first, I do have a save game uh, blueprint asset and this is essentially going to contain all of my variables that I want to store and that I want to save. And I can create any kind of variable type such as boolean, float, vector. So if you wanted to store the location of an item, you might want to use something like a vector or a transform. If you want to store something like number of clicks, you'd use integer and so on and so forth. And that's what we're going to be doing today. We're just essentially going to be saving the number of the clicks that the player does and then loading it up again when uh, you know we close the game and open it up again. So I'm going to show you exactly what's going on here and what we're going to be doing. So when I press a button on the keyboard, you can see my number of clicks goes up and I close it and it keeps going up from where I left off. So anyway, back to what I was doing over here. So we've got our save game asset in the content browser. And then we've also got our script here and it does look a little bit complicated. I've tried to simplify it as best as I can for you. I know there's a whole bunch of different tutorials on this, but they make it really, really complicated. So what I'm going to be trying to do is just explain it and break it down step by step. So starting off with an overview, let's see exactly what happens. So in this example that I showed you, when the player presses K, it does a check and that check is going to be to see whether or not a save game already exists with the slot name that you give it. You can set that to whatever you want and if there is, it loads a, it loads a save game, if it doesn't, it creates one. It then essentially stores some information in a saver subclass and then we cast to our my, my save game to actually get the information for number of clicks we set it to a new value and then we just save the game to the slot using the same slot name and then from that we just print a string to see exactly what's working what we're working with now if you're going to have your gameplay mechanics where you set the location of your objects instead of using print string you're going to just set the location of objects or you'd have your ui bindings for a player xp system and so on and so forth so let's get started on creating something like this. So what I'm going to do to start with, I'm going to create a new save game asset. And to do that, all you got to do is just right click in the content browser anywhere you want, press blueprint class, and then drag this over and just type in save game. Click that and make sure you don't name it anything else. You know, you don't try and name it from here. Just type in save game, press select. And name it from here. For me, I'm just going to call this my save game. So I'm going to open this up and inside of here we need to put all of the information in there that we want to persistently store. So for me, right now, that's just going to be a variable for number of clicks. So what I'm going to do is just press a new variable, add it in, and I'm going to set this to an integer as it's going to allow us to work with numbers and over a variable name, I'm just going to work with number uh, num of clicks, just like that. And that is it. Let's go ahead and compile it, save it, and make sure that it works. If you want to, you can set 
anything you want in here. Like I said, the location of your objects or your player XP, player level, and uh, or even best lap times. It's completely up to you. But I'm going to go ahead and close that for now. So now that we've done that, we don't need to touch it anymore. Let's go over to wherever we're trying to, you know, create the save game from or load the save game from. For me, that's just going to be the third person player because I'm going to be just pressing an input from this uh, blueprint and then just adding in all the functionality from here. So to start with, let's go ahead and see exactly what we need to do. So I've got the input. I'm pretty sure you know how to make that. If you don't, just right click, input, chuck something in there. So first things first, like I said before, we're going to need to run a check and this check is just going to see whether or not a save game exists already. So right click, does save game exist and drag it in. Now we have something here called the slot name. The slot name needs to be something different uh, from your save game file and also uh, yes, yeah, so it needs to be different from the save name file and also the variable name. Now I advise that you use the same slot name for like all of your stuff just to make it easier to manage. If you wanted to, you could put your sa uh, save name into a variable, but for now I'm just going to work with slot name. Just like that. So now we've done that, we need to do a branch check. So a branch is essentially going to be true or false, and we're going to hook this up to does save game exist and you can see it's red on the return value so we know it's going to be a boolean and it's just going to be checking uh, whether it's true or false. So what we need to do now from true is we need to uh, load game from slot and where if it's false we need to create a game from with the slot. So let's start off with true. So if it is we're going to load save game, load game from slot and then if it's false, we're going to create one. Create save game object. And under save game class, we're going to go ahead and set that to my save game. The one that you just made in the content browser. Just double check it's alright. And also make sure that it's not save game. Because save game is just going to be like the parent, basically. And it's not going to contain all of the, uh, the variables that we just created. So we're going to leave that at that. And once again, over at load game from slot, make sure slot name is exactly the same here. So type in slot name. And then from here, we need to do a few more things. So the next thing is set saver subclass. If you haven't created a subclass already, I advise you go ahead and do so. It's really easy to do that. Just press uh, add variable, type in saver subclass. Like I said, the saver subclass is essentially just going to allow us to store the information and change it uh, before we save it. So I'm just going to type in save game as the variable type. And then, like I showed you before, it's just going to be set saver subclass. And then we're just going to do the same thing. So essentially what this is going to do is it's going to store all the information that's just been loaded and put it into the subclass or it's also going to create a save game object and then just chuck it into the saver subclass for you. So the next thing that we need to do now is cast to our save game. So cast to and then my save game. And this is essentially going to be the bit where we start to get the information. And then we do some changes to it and then we save it. So for now I'm just going to hook up cast to my save game over here into the object wildcard as we are referencing it. Once we've done that we can now talk directly to the save game and the variables that we created earlier. So if we were to drag off as my save game we could get number of clicks or we could even set number of clicks and that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're just going to be setting the number of clicks to uh, a higher value. So we're going to get number of clicks and we're going to do the same thing twice on both sides to drag it out and make sure you got it hooked up. And from here, we're just going to do increment integer. And this is essentially just going to plus one to the value um, each time that it runs this little sequence. And I'm going to hook it up into the start node here. 
and then return node we can see the value and then we're going to print the string for that but for now we need to go ahead and save the game using this information because we've just actually added plus one to it now we need to save it so the player can use it later on so type in save game to slot and I'm going to do that twice just like that or actually I'm just going to use the same one for now just type in slot name and make sure it is spelt correctly and under save game object get a reference to your sub, uh, save a subclass I don't like to use the save a subclass reference that we got over here too much so I just hook it up in there directly I am going to use two for now and I'm going to do the same thing basically and I'm just going to hook this up to the middle and this one up over here and hopefully now that should start saving your information and what we're also going to do lastly is just quickly print a string to get the value so we can see whether it's saving or not if it's not saving we're going to notice that the integer is not going up and down so I'm just going to hook up the string to the return value for number of clicks here and here just so we can see that it has been added and if it has it's just going to print it out so if we compile and we press play and if we start pressing our input now you can see our number is going up now if I was to go ahead and open up my save game in here you can see that my number of clicks is zero but because I've already been changing it I'm using the same script it's going to be slightly higher for you it's going to start off at whatever the default value is for here if I compile and save that it might change it back down to zero for me I'm not too sure nope but you can see it is adding it up each time that we go ahead and press play but anyway that is pretty much everything for this tutorial hopefully you get a good idea of how you can actually save and load information using unreal engine there's loads and loads of cool stuff that you can do uh, so feel free to experiment with it i will be making more tutorials on save game systems uh, such as creating player xp and level systems like the one i showed you in my game uh, so thanks for watching comment like and subscribe and i will see you in the next video goodbye